Bloomberg is reporting that Spotify is going to raise prices not only in the U.S., but in other international markets later this year, as soon as the end of this month. And the stock's reacting really positively, up or about 5 or 6% as I'm recording early on Wednesday morning. And I think this is really an indication that Spotify is starting to leverage its position in the market. This is not just a regular price increase. This is actually bundling at work. So I want to dig into exactly what we know today, what's being reported, and then The way to think about this is investors, because this isn't just your normal price increase from Spotify. This is actually a much bigger strategy that the company has been laying out over the last few years and I think is now really going to start taking hold in 2024. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. So let's go to the reports. And I'm going to show the article from Bloomberg and then also some info from The Verge. This is the Bloomberg article talking about the price increases, increasing prices one to $2 a month in five markets by the end of April, including the UK, Australia, and Pakistan. So this is gonna be international price increases following price increases that took place, in particular in the US late last year. So not really a huge surprise. This was something that was gonna hit the US first and then probably be expanded around the world. But the more interesting reporting is that there's apparently gonna be a new tier that is only gonna include pot music and podcasts, but not audiobooks. And that would be at the same price that we have seen at about $11 a month here in the US for an individual plan. The Verge covered this as well. Uh, also introduced the idea that maybe there would be different audio quality. This is something that Netflix introduced with some of their different tiers you can get. And they've changed this over the years, but typically the highest quality video is gonna be aligned with the highest price product. So what we're seeing is Spotify ratchet up prices and bundle these products together. That's really where I think we need to focus as investors, is that's how you're gonna extract more value out of the ecosystem. So Spotify's first step building a big successful company was going to be attracting enough users to reach scale. And I think they've done that. They have over 600 million users now. They're growing that user base at 20 or 25% a year. So it looks like they're on their way to having about a billion users. So the user base is growing. That's going to grow your revenue base. But Spotify needs to share about 70% of the revenue with record labels and with artists as part of their music contracts. So if they're going to get any operating leverage on the business, they need to maintain their operating costs. That's one of the big changes that we've seen over the past year, Spotify cutting their operating expenses, particularly sales and marketing. That started to take hold late in 2023, but we are going to see an acceleration of that in 2024 because there was additional layoffs either earlier this year or late last year. So Spotify actually reducing those operating expenses as revenue is growing. But the other way that you can grow the business is by expanding into new verticals. And that's what we're seeing with audiobooks. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. It may have seemed like kind of a throwaway at the time, but when some of these new plans were introduced in the U.S., audiobooks were thrown in. There was 15 hours of audiobooks that were available for premium users, and you could just browse and access audiobooks kind of at your whim. I found this really useful to just be able to go listen to books as just another thing within the Spotify app. I listen to a lot of podcasts when I'm out for a walk or a run, but now I could throw on an audiobook as well. So just another piece of content to add to the ecosystem. But there wasn't an additional cost, at least not until you went above that 15 hour mark. But it looks like what we're gonna go to in the future is audiobooks are gonna be an additional charge, about a dollar a month, maybe $2 a month, And it's going to start to be a bundle. And this is where I think Spotify is eventually heading is that they're going to increase that price a little bit over time, but bundle more pieces of content together. So you have audiobooks added to podcasts and music. The other thing that we're seeing more and more on Spotify and do not sleep on this is video. A lot of podcasts are including video. So is there a way that they're going to include subscription video, maybe advertising in video, in some of these bundles. Is there a future where five years from now you're paying $20, $25 a month for Spotify, but you get all of your music ad-free, you get all of your videos ad-free, you get all audiobooks ad-free, and suddenly this is a pretty compelling product. That's, I think, where we're maybe heading with Spotify. And it starts with owning the music business and then expanding that own your ears strategy to podcasts and then audiobooks and then we'll see where they go from there. So I think that's the context with which we should think about this price increase is it's starting to become a bundle within Spotify. 
let's put some of this growth and operating leverage into a little bit of perspective because I think the numbers are really stark when you start looking at Spotify's performance, compound annual growth rate. These are quarterly numbers at Spotify and these are in euros, but compound annual growth rate on the revenue side, 21.5%. And you can see that operating expenses, selling general administration expenses specifically, peaked at the end of 2022. That's when the company started to do layoffs, started to really rationalize their workforce and get more efficient. And it's no coincidence that that's also when you see that this is also when you start to see improvements in net income and free cash flow. There is a bit of a lag, a couple of quarters of lag between when some of these expense changes hit and when they actually go to the bottom line because especially in Europe, there are costs associated with reducing your workforce. So that operating leverage really didn't start to hit until the end of 2023. Like I said, there were more cost cuts that happened late last year and early this year. So we should see more leverage there. And at the same time, these price increases are going to go into effect in 2024. So we're going to have acceleration on the top line. I think all of this is just phenomenal news for Spotify's financials. And that's what's ultimately going to drive the stock going forward. This is a company that's been stuck in a rut, not been able to generate significant free cash flow or grow that over time. It's struggled to generate net income when you include things like stock-based compensation. So I think we're starting to see that corner turn. And this is where Spotify is starting to kind of turn the ratchets of growth and profitability that it has available. The other place that I want to see improvement in 2024 is advertising. And this is an area where the company's really struggled to monetize in the way that I think they could. But again, you're starting to see more local ads in Spotify, especially in podcasts. Could that extend to video and audiobooks? That I think is the hope for investors is that this growth train is just beginning and Spotify is really starting to focus on maintaining those operating costs and getting operating leverage in the business. So I thought this was actually a really big announcement. The stock's up five or 6%, like I said, that's a nice move in the stock and shares are up over 100% over the past year. So the market's obviously responding, but this is definitely a stock that I'm still in accumulation mode. I don't wanna be selling shares of Spotify now because I think the future just continues to be incredibly bright for this company. And higher prices are a piece of that, but better bundles that are adding more value to consumers is gonna play a big role as well. So what do you think about Spotify's potential price changes? These have not been announced yet, but I wouldn't be surprised to see these announced over the next couple of weeks. Leave your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.